Hello and welcome to an Apple Script episode of Apple a Day. Today I'm going to show you how you can use a custom icon in the Apple Script display dialog command. Now there are two ways you can do this. You can direct reference an ICNS file by specifying a path to that file, or you can build your Apple Script as an application and then replace the ICNS file which resides within the application package. But before we do any of that, how the heck do you even create an ICNS file? And what is an ICNS file? Well, ICNS is short for icons, I would imagine, and it contains a series of images in multiple sizes. So in order to create one of these, first you'll need a PNG file of the image you want to convert into an icon. I'm just going to use my Apple a day logo, and then you need to find a way to do the conversion. Well, luckily there's a ton of applications on the App Store. Uh, some are free and some are paid. I found this one. Uh, it's a free one, and it seems to do the job. It's called ICNSify, or I Iconsify. I don't know. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, <laughs> but it's spelled I-C-N-S-I-F-Y. I'll go ahead and search for that on the App Store, and here it is. Now, I've already downloaded it, so I'll just click on Open. And when you launch it, it opens a window allowing you to drop in your image. I'll do that right now. So once you drag on your image, you have to tell the app where you want to save the files. And you do that by clicking on this folder icon. And I'm just going to select the desktop. Then on the bottom where it says icon name, I'll type in whatever name I want to call it. And I'll just use Apple a day. Then I'll click on this cog to generate the individual icon files. So if I go back to my desktop, you can see it created an Apple a day folder with a suffix dot icon set. Within that folder, you can see the individual icons saved in various sizes. Okay, so the individual files don't work for AppleScript. We still need to convert these into an ICNS file. Well, luckily this app has a second step to it, and clicking on this file icon will generate the ICNS file. And I'll do that right now. If I go back to the desktop, there it is, appleaday.icns. So let's test it out. I'll create a new blank Apple Script file, and I'll type in display dialog, and then shift quote, hello from Apple a day, and close the quotes. And then I want to reference the ICNS file we just created. So I'll add with icon, and normally you would put in like caution or note or stop, but instead I'm going to type in the word file. So with icon file, and then I'm going to type in two opening brackets, and you'll see why in a moment. And so after the second bracket, I'm going to type in path to desktop as text, and then close that bracket. So we have a bracketed area that is going to return the path to the desktop as text. And right after that, I'm going to type in the and symbol, the ampersand. And in Apple Script, the ampersand is used to connect two pieces of text together. So I want to add the name of the file. So we'll have the path to the desktop plus the name of the file that we want to reference that's on the desktop. And that name is appleaday.icns. So I'm going to type that in inside double quotes, shift quote, and then I need a closing bracket to finish off the statement. And if I run this, it displays the dialog with the custom icon, so it worked great. But unfortunately, we lose the ability to display that custom icon with a caution or a stop icon alongside it. There doesn't appear to be a way to tell AppleScript that you want to use an icon file as well as the stop icon. The only way to do that would be to create your own version of all of those icons. Now you could have multiple ICNS files, which you can customize any way you like, and reference them throughout your Apple Script in various display dialog statements. But if all you want to do is use a custom icon and still have access to the built-in caution and stop icons, then all you have to do is build your script as an application and then swap out the ICNS file. Let's do that right now. So in order to save this as an application, you have to include the onRun function. Just type in onRun at the very beginning, followed by opening and closing brace brackets. Then I'm going to type in three examples for the display dialog. I'll type in display dialog, hello from Apple a day, with icon note. And then display dialog, warning from Apple a day, with icon caution. And finally, display dialog, stop from Apple a day, with icon stop. And then you have to end the run by typing in the statement, end run. 
So let's make sure this works before we build it. I'll just click on Run and then click OK for each dialog. Note that all of these display dialogs still use the Apple Script icon because that's what we're running it in. Now let's build the application. Under the File menu, select the Export option. And I'm just going to call this Apple a Day Greeting. And I'll save this on my desktop. I'll change the file format to Application and then press Save. If I navigate to the desktop, I can see the application right there. I'll run the application to make sure it works. And you can see that it still displays the Apple script icon because obviously we have not changed it yet. So let me show you how to change it. I'll select the application in the finder and right click on it and choose Show Package Contents. Then double click on the contents to open it up and do the same to Resources, open that up. And inside the Resources folder, you'll see a file called applet.icns. That's the file we want to replace. So back on the desktop, I have my appletoday.icns file. I'm going to rename that to applet.icns. Then I'm going to drag that into my resources folder for the application I just made and replace the file that's in there. If you don't see this option to replace dialog, then the names don't match. It's very important that the icns file is called applet.icns. Once that file is successfully replaced, I'll close the resource folder and launch the application again. And you can see that the Apple script icon has been replaced by the custom icon that we just created. So there you have it. An easy way to take your compiled Apple scripts to the next level by adding a custom application icon to your display dialogs. And it's not just the display dialogs that'll take advantage of this icon, the finder notices it too. If I do command tab while the application is still running, you'll see that the custom icon is displayed. It's also displayed down in the dock, right here. So like I said, it just takes your application up a notch. Well, that's it for today. Thanks as always for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. I'm John Martins, and I'll see you in the next episode of Apple A Day.